All right, Graham, we caught up with you early on in the event, and we've had three very windy days since then. So how have things gone for you and Stale? It has been a very windy event, um, and one that we haven't had in a long time. Um, the first day went really well for us, uh, and you know, generally it, it has been going well. We've been trying a lot of things and, and working on some new things and, and checking up on our, uh, on our settings because we haven't had this much wind in a while. Um, we're standing in 14th right now, still room to improve, and uh, still two more final days of racing, so we're, uh, we want to get back in it. Now, you guys, unfortunately, had an OCS at one point. Um, were you aware of it, and was there some discussion about whether or not you should go back, and how are these decisions usually made on the boat? Um, there were three of us in a group in that race, uh, starting from the pin up, um, and all three of us were over. I knew that we could be seen by one of the ends, but it was we weren't 100% sure whether we were over or not. Um, we discussed it briefly, but decided to race on anyways. Um, we ended up with a tenth in that race, um, which you know was okay, but still not the best. But you know, if you're not trying, um, then if you're not pushing it, then you gotta you gotta get OCS every once in a while. So we're okay with it. And when something like that happens to you, does it change your uh, mindset for the rest of the event? Uh, when you get an OCS, you do have to be a little bit more conservative. Yesterday, we were a little bit lower risk on our starts, just so we, you know, don't get another OCS and really tank our regatta. Um, but you know, you, you got to make the right moves at the right time. So if we feel that we need to go hard in one direction for the rest of the the event, then, then we have to do it. Uh, 470 is one of the most technically demanding classes that we sail in the Olympics. Is it tough to get the boat transition from heavy air settings um, to the light air settings like we have today? Well, especially over the last week, I don't think we've had under 15 knots for a week, so the entire fleet's been tuned up for big breeze, and today is the first day where there really hasn't been any wind, and um, you can see everyone in the boat parks frantically checking their rigs and, and changing things and, and really making sure that they're dialed into the light air. Um, I joked to, uh, to our coach Romain this morning that I forgot how to tack in light air, so we'll, uh, we'll be sure when we go out on the, on the race course to practice a few more of our, um, our boat handling maneuvers in the light air. Now last night was a big day for our team. Sperry Topsider announces our new title sponsor both for this Olympics and the next quad. How do you think that's going to change the dynamic of the team? We're really excited about the announcement of Sperry being a partner with the U.S. Sailing Team. Um, we've been working them as a, as a personal sponsor and for them to jump on with the rest of the team is really awesome and I think it's really going to you know, give everyone else more support and um, you know, there's only better things to see in the future out of the whole team and uh, our new partnership with Sperry Topsider. And you and Stu have been working with them for a while, right? So is this a natural transition for you guys? We've been working for with them uh, for sure over the last year and have some have had some other contacts with them. Um, we've got the big Sperry logo on our spinnaker, so we've definitely got a, a close connection with them and we wear their shoes on and off the water everywhere we go. Um, we absolutely love them. So it's pretty easy for us to transition and um, there were already a few emails exchanged with, uh, with the Sperry um, personnel about you know the new partnership and everything so we're, we're really happy. All right Grant thanks for talking to us and good luck this week. All right thanks.